Jackson. In my misspent youth, I played bass in the Pogues. I quit the band when I got married back in 86, but now I'm a free woman again, and the Pogues want me back for a Christmas reunion tour. I'm thrilled to be asked, but what will I wear? I was 21 when I left the band, now I'm 40. I'd love to look fabulous when I'm up there singing Fairy Tale in New York to thousands of fans in the Point Depot. T-shirt and jeans just won't do. But I don't want to go too far and end up looking all cats later. I really need some expert guidance and advice. It's time to meet this punk icon in person and find out why on earth she wrote into Off The Rails for help. I'm going to have to basically appear at a Christmas party for 10,000 people every night for two weeks. I have no idea what to do. And as I always do, I take my problems to the gym and someone mentioned Off The Rails. I just thought that would be great and I just had this vision of a team of superheroes <laughs> swooping in and like just, you know, saving me. Beyond that, the thought of that I'm going to have to stand up there and sing Kirsty McCall's part in Fairy Tale in New York is just really wrecks my head. <laughs> I wouldn't like them to be reminded of how I was. I'd, I'd be much happier if they just, because I haven't seen them for 18 years, and when I meet them next week, I, I want them to just kind of think, oh, we'd forgotten how nice she was. <laughs> what I really want is just to be able to look in that mirror that they always have by the stage door just before you go on stage and just think, yeah, and just to feel confident. I do not have a visual imagination and this is why I need help because I cannot even visualise myself on stage mm -hmm. at all. So, bring on the stylist. <laughs> they're coming, baby, they're coming. Graham Cruz is one of Ireland's most avant-garde stylists. In a former life, Graham was used to strutting his stuff on stage, so he knows what it takes to look the part. When Koch was in the Pogues the first time round, she wore a lot of men's clothes, a lot of suits, and I think the idea was to blend in with the boys in the band. I think the most difficult thing is taking Koch out of her comfort zone, which is jeans and t-shirts. I don't really see any t-shirts being involved in our styling exercise, so I think that's going to be our biggest challenge. Help. Graham's first task is to ransack Coach's rather casual wardrobe. It's t-shirts and jeans all the way. This is my punk rock skirt. Skirt, okay, so it isn't just t-shirt and jeans every day. This is my one thing that I wear for my punk gigs. I wear my punk rock mini skirt with a t-shirt. With a t-shirt. And my Gucci boots, my pride. Get them out. Boots. In my boot section, where we have... Next to your wellies. My wellie boots. <laughs> I like it. Here we go now. Oh. Cute. Oh, yes. And I believe therein lies a beautiful dress that was bought but never worn. I want to see you. I can't do sleeveless. I'm a woman who, on whom gravity has done its work. I can't wear non-supported tops. I have hips. I don't know what I was thinking. <laughs> she doesn't know any of the underwear tricks, does you she? You don't know. Uh, oh, there are secrets. A novice. There are secrets. We got ourselves oh. a novice. I don't think we're going to be able to use a lot of what we've got, <laughs> unfortunately. Well, Graeme, I know what my thoughts are, but what do you reckon this wardrobe says about coach? I think, first of all, this wardrobe says, help! <laughs> help! Um, it doesn't say enough. It's very easy. All the clothes are very easy to wear, which is cool, but we're looking for rock and roll stage outfit. So we need something that's got a bit more life to it. I think we do. I think we've got ourselves a bit of a challenge here. Okay. Are you up for the challenge? Yeah. Are you scared? Yeah. Good. <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> oh, no, no, no. Right, they're mine. They're mine. They're they're mine. mine. <laughs> he stole my boots. Listen, before you scoot off, what do you think, honestly? I think maybe getting her out of the realm of comfort clothes, mm -hmm. of it being too casual, we've got to get a little bit of sparkle in there, we've got to get a mm -hmm. bit of rock and roll. Yeah, well, you're the men to do it. I think she's lovely. We're going to have a lot of fun. Yeah, the next few days. I think I need, I need overnight to sit down and mm -hmm. mull through a couple of ideas. I have a little idea in my mm -hmm. head, but I just want to kind of cement it first. 
While Graham goes off to think about Coach's new image, my next stop isn't very rock and roll. It's the gym. When Coach is not busy rehearsing with the radiators, she can be found flexing those packs with her gym buddies. So what do they think of her punk goddess's sense of style? I know Coach is coming here. She's coming to the gym, so she's going to be wearing comfortable clothes. But sometimes you must see her in her, in her civvies, if you like. How does Coach generally dress, would you say? Occasionally, she's a bit conservative, really. Casual, yeah, pretty casual. How would you, you guys like to see her? Just to get away from that a little bit, just to glam it up a bit. She's great legs, great figure. She has a lovely figure. She could get away with nearly anything, yeah. I think. You know, yeah. Yeah. whatever's out there, she could wear, really. Ah, uh, that's nice. There's nothing like a vote of confidence from your friends. With that toned body, Coach is a blank style canvas for our stylist, Grain. But is she very punk? Body by Pat Henry. <laughs> Brain by Smirnoff. <laughs> Brain by Smirnoff. There's definitely a rock star in there. And the woman to make Coach look the part is American makeup artist Christine Lucignano. She has worked on Sharon Stone, President Bill Clinton, Liz Taylor, and even did Courtney Cox's wedding. I think that most makeup artists have a couple of things that really irritate them. Um, I'd have to say the biggest one for me would be foundation when it's worn too heavily. And probably over tweezed brows is another thing. Coach will get a lesson in stage makeup from Christine. But first, what's her verdict on Coach's own makeup bag? Christine, what are your thoughts on it? No, I agree. I think it's a great start. I think the fact that the Dr. Hauschka is important to you and in your kit is, is something you should stick with. When you're on the road and you're touring, there's a couple of other things. They do a thing called eye solace. For little ampules, you soak the cotton pad, leave a pad on each eye for about up to 10 minutes, and it relieves the puffiness, the redness. So it's a great little thing to do the morning after for your eyes. <laughs> that sounds good. Some nice looking tools I see here. Um, tweezer man. Um, for tweezing your brows, I always say we don't pluck brows because we pluck chickens, but we tweeze <laughs> brows. Yes. So for tweezing the brows, I think you've got a beautiful brow shape, but I think I would love to just take a tiny bit away. Coach is not too sure, but Christine gets stuck in anyway. Now, because these are almost virginal brows, as it were, and most people are very worried, I know, about the fact that it's going to hurt when they tweeze their brows. Oh, yeah. So what I do is I kind of almost pull the skin. As long as you're not doing it on a, uh, a tour bus that's flying yeah. down the road, you'll be OK. Uh, I wouldn't do that anyway, because the lads would never stop taking, taking the mix. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> So you see that we haven't over tweezed. I'm almost finished, but I think a mistake that a lot of people make uh, is as they start to tweeze, I think it's something therapeutic about it, but they end up over tweezing. And they end up taking this particular area here and they tweeze a dent out of it. Wow. So you end up having what we call tadpole brows. So um, we're almost done here. That's amazing. It, now you yeah, see, that, that looks much more hooded on this side. It does. It, again, the eye space, it totally changes the eye space. Okay, we're not giving any surprises away here because we are going to keep our stage glam and fab look for a reveal day. But right now, though, you're going to show us a nice fresh daytime look for Koch, right? Perfect. Perfect. So I'm going to start out with a clean skin. So Koch's skin is, for the most part, beautiful and clean, but I'm taking a little bit of her toner, her freshener, then use a little bit of moisturizer. As you get a bit older, your skin loses that beautiful, hydrated feel, and you have to help it along a little bit more than you would. You'd never know this one was a day past 17, so mm -hmm. she's a lucky girl. <laughs> now, concealer is either our best friend or our worst enemy. I think that it's all how you put it on. I'm going to actually use some of this as your concealer. So if you just kind of tap the color, it's not about putting too much on, just, just enough. I think a lot of women are afraid of shimmer because they think it's going to age them. Mm. The larger the metallic flecks can sometimes set into any fine lines and wrinkles. Not that any of us have any of those. No. But um, this is done so finely that you really don't see it. You just see almost like a moist look to the eye. Or have you ever used a lash curl? No. Would you mind me trying a lash curl? Go for it. Okay. I know they look like torture tools from, you know, the Second World War. Um, you just slip it onto your lashes. Now perfectly positioned. Now give it a squeeze. Make sure you don't have any of your skin. Yeah. Is that comfortable? Yeah. That really opens the eye, makes such a difference. Wow. Now for your mascara. 
Um, mascara is something that I'm always lecturing about. You need to make sure that the mascara gets thrown away before it gets dry in the tube. Yeah. So that's generally no more than six weeks to two months and it needs to be gone. That I often? know. Yeah, and we don't realize that, but there's so many things that can grow in that dark, wet place, so make oh, sure you keep it current. See, your lashes already look so much fuller. Such a difference. That's lovely. It's That's really a great pretty. Look, yeah, a yeah. yeah. million dollar question. Do you think you could do that yourself? <laughs> no. <laughs> Well, she'll have to, because Christine won't be on hand for the big gig in the point. And after the break, shopping's not going too well either. <laughs> you don't sound happy. This is exactly what I feared. Landlady goes insane, isn't it? Good luck. <laughs> After an absence of 18 years, Katja Reardon is going back on stage with the Pogues and she has nothing to wear. We've plucked and ransacked and now it's time to hear stylist Graeme Cruz's plans. Okay, Graeme, I know that you've had overnight to think about it and you have some great ideas for Katja today, but you've gone that extra little mile, haven't you? You've actually put on I've put together a little, a little mood board, which I hope will give you an idea of, of the plan. A mood board. A mood board, would you like to yeah. see? Yes, please. Okay. So, we have Debbie Harry here because Yay. what we're looking at is the theory on how Debbie Harry dressed. We're not going to dress you like Debbie Harry, but Debbie Harry wore whatever the hell she wanted. And that's what we're going to do with you. Coach, what do you what think? Do you what think? are your first impressions? This is a fabulous thing you've made. I, I just can't see myself in it. I mean, that's so tight and just... I can't even imagine myself wearing that. I want people to see you from miles away. But they'd see a, a Christmas tree as well. But we're not going to make you look like a Christmas tree. <laughs> we're going to make you look like a rock and roll superstar. I love the way you say that. I love the way he says that too. And I'm With excited confidence. and I want to get shopping. So I think I'm going to send you guys off shopping immediately. Okay. okay. There's a lot of hard work ahead as Graeme has to find two stage outfits for Koch, as well as clothes for doing interviews and travelling around rock star style. Graeme chooses lots of glitter and glitz, but will Koch go for it? It's definitely sparkling. Yeah. What do you think? Uh, it's gorgeous, but I feel so uncomfortable. I just feel On top. undressed, unsupported. I think the bottom part works really well because there's a lot of swing in the skirt. Yeah, it's and it's obviously good. something that's going to pick up a lot of light on stage. So maybe we try layering something over the top. How do you get on? Oh. <laughs> you don't sound happy. Oh, no. This is exactly what I feared. Landlady goes insane, isn't it? Good look. <laughs> it's a great look, just no, maybe no. not for the pogues. Yeah. I, I still love the skirt, so maybe we should have a look at trying to find a skirt that's got some sort of shape similar to this yeah. and this much sparkle. Mm -hmm. But maybe not this no, outfit. No, no, okay, no. you're allowed to take it off. Thank you. <laughs> okay, let me see outfit number two. Oh my god, you look. Amazing. Look at your bum. J Lo would be so jealous. Oh, See, this works. Um, and it's very, very rock and roll. With the right accessories and enough bling and the right hair and makeup. Hot damn. Okay. Hot damn. All right. I like it. I love it. Look at your bum. Wow. Back on track with the shopping. But there's still the issue of hair. Later that evening, we met the hairdresser to the stars, Dylan Bradshaw. He regularly cuts the hair of you 2 and the cores. An impressive CV, but Koch likes her hair the way it is and doesn't want any big changes. Most popular kind of uh, request is um, give me a complete new look, but take half an inch off. You know? <laughs> mm, that could be trouble. The problem I find at the moment with the hair is it's too many layers on it, okay? It makes it more difficult to manage because if you look at, we've length here and layers are up here quite short. So it makes it much harder to try and style the haircut. Um, also with fringe, we just think there's, I just think there's too much fringe here. So what is Coach making of all this? I'm a bit nervous because I just, I don't like losing any length. And I just, I, I won't know if he's actually chopping my fringe off or not. So, but it's all, it's all out of my hands now. Dylan does seem to be cutting off rather a lot. She's keeping her reaction to herself as she heads to band practice with the radiators. But will the lads in the band even notice the difference? 
Did you get your hair cut? Yes. <laughs> yeah. It's very nice, yeah. Very nice. I like the cut, yeah. I do. It's like sort of pixie, sort of strandy thing. <laughs> it suits. It suits. Because you've got the face.